Namaskaram. Welcome to all. Today we will discuss a new concept that is directional derivative of a multivariable function. These are the solutions of last homework. Uh, the directional derivative is the generalization of our partial derivative. We know that the partial derivative of a function gives the rate of change of that function in the direction parallel to the coordinate axis. That means, suppose, uh, suppose we have to, okay, suppose we have to find the partial derivative of this function uh, at this point. This is x naught y naught. Okay, with respect to x. And what is the meaning? That means we have to differentiate this function along a straight line parallel to x axis that means the variable moves along the straight line then what is the corresponding change in the function function is like this the function value this is a surface we know that it's a disequal f x y is a surface and the function value along the straight line this straight line is parallel to x axis okay then at, the, at, at this straight line it is clear that y is fixed here y is equal to y not y is throughout fixed only x can vary okay then the corresponding function is say like a curve. Corresponding function is like a curve. So next, then we have we can easily differentiate this curve with respect to this uh, uh, change of x. That's the idea of uh, partial derivative with respect to x. Similarly, you can find the partial derivative with respect to y. How to find the partial derivative with respect to y? First of all, we consider a straight line which is parallel to y-axis and passing through this point. Then you imagine the corresponding function value. The function value is like this, the curve in this plane. Okay. And it's a, uh, then now we can easily differentiate this curve in our usual manner because now this function is like a single variable function. Is it is equal to f of because x is throughout fixed. Suppose the x value is some x naught. Yeah, x value is x naught. So now is it is equal to x naught y like that, almost like that. Okay, instead of y, it is actually y naught plus something. Okay, because only y value is changed. Or you can write this as f of x naught y. So uh, then now the now the z is in terms of y. Then you can differentiate this uh, using our usual rules. Okay, that's the idea of uh, partial derivative. Okay, also we know that partial derivative gives the slope of the a uh, curve at this point, slope of the tangent at this point. One is like this, other one is like this. Okay, so next one in this session we will discuss directional derivative. Actually, the directional derivative gives the rate of change of the function in any direction. Okay, so in the case of partial derivative, we can differentiate this function at this point only two direction. One is parallel to x-axis, other is parallel to y-axis. Directional derivative in directional derivative we can differentiate this function in any direction, any given direction. Okay. We know that how to evaluate the partial derivative. For example, uh, suppose we have to find the partial derivative in y direction or with respect to y. So what we will do? First we fix x naught. First we fix the value of x. So first of all we consider this straight line. Okay. So z is equal to f x naught y is nothing. It is the value of the function on this straight line which is parallel to y axis, isn't it? So again z is equal to f of x naught y. This is the value of the function along this straight line, straight line parallel to y axis passing through x naught y naught. Okay. It is clear that in 3D, it is a curve, 3D curve. Then we can differentiate. Now because z is in terms of one variable, y, y alone, because x naught is a constant. Okay. Similarly, here, suppose uh, we have to find the derivative along this direction. Suppose we have to find the derivative along this direction at this point. Okay. So first of all, we have to find equation of a straight line passing through this point and parallel to this vector okay because the direction is uh, this is our direction okay so suppose we have to differentiate uh, this function in this direction at this point so first we have to find the straight line passing through this point similar to our partial derivative then we have to find the value of the function next we have to identify the value of the function along this uh, straight line like this okay now what happened now he said is a, a function of single variable 
whatever b anyway is a decimal one in single variable like our uh, usual function y is equal to f of x then you can differentiate this function with respect to that variable then substitute the value that's idea okay so first of all we have to find the equation of the straight line okay so before moving to find the mathematical formulation of partial derivative we have to find equation of the straight line a straight line passing through this point x0 y0 the vector representation of this point is r0 equal to x0 i plus y0 y0 j okay and also we have a vector a given vector so we have to find a straight line which is parallel to this vector and passing through this vector r0 okay so that is very easy the vector equation of a straight line passing through a vector and parallel to a given vector u is nothing it is r equal to r0 plus some parameter s into u okay we can easily derive this equation uh, because uh, using our uh, vector addition rule okay I just redraw this concept so we have to find equation of the straight line passing through a given vector r0 and parallel to given vector u okay so we have to find this r of t okay correspond to different different t the totality of this r of t gives this straight line okay then we know what is uh, vector addition we have now we now we have two vectors one is r0 other is u what about this r0 plus uh, okay one more thing is there uh, suppose uh, what about this vector suppose we consider a vector like this suppose we consider a vector like this okay what about this vector okay suppose uh, this vector give uh, the direction of the new vector is same as u only the difference is magnitude so the new vector is nothing it is a multiple a scalar multiple of u isn't it so we consider a vector it may be uh, the vector is all the direction of this vector is same as u only the magnitude is different so whatever be the size of this vector it is always it can always represent it of the form s of u where s is some real number okay so then next we consider uh, r0 plus s u how to add two vectors we just move this vector to the end of this vector so we get it like a like we get uh, like this uh, okay this is our uh, su then this is r0 so so like this yeah so this is our su we shift this su at the tip of r0 okay then we complete this triangle and this value gives exactly r0 plus su okay this is nothing this is r0 plus su okay that is our r of t you got the idea so every vector on the straight line can be represented of the form r0 plus su for some s where s is a real number in particular when s equal to 0 that it gives exactly our r0 okay so that's why a straight line passing through r0 parallel to u can be represented r equal to r0 plus su where s is any real number okay if you restrict s then we get a line segment okay that's all so this is the vector equation of a straight line passing through a vector r0 and parallel to u okay we can use this equation in our derivation of uh, a formula of directional derivative okay as mentioned before uh, the straight line this is l l denote the straight line passing through this point x0 y0 and parallel to given vector u okay for simplicity we take u as a unit vector because we are interested only on the direction okay in which direction so in the for simplicity we take u as a unit vector unit vector means modulus of u equal to 1 what about modulus of u it is nothing it is square root of u1 square plus u2 square equal to 1 or if you square it what happened this is u1 square plus u2 square equal to 1 all are equal okay so this is the idea of unit vector so we assume that u is a unit vector and it's a given point so we have to find the equation of straight line L. By the previous uh, discussion, we know that the vector equation of the straight line is R of t equal to R0 plus SU, where S is any real number. S is a any real number. So what about R0? The re vector representation of R0 is this point. This is a, this vector is actually our R0. So the vector equation of this R0 is X0 i plus Y0 j plus S times U is uh, U1 i plus U2 j. By comparing the i part and j part, we get x0 s u1 i plus y0 plus s u2 j. Okay, 
and what is r of t r of t is nothing it is actually x of t i plus y of t j this is the uh, uh, representation of this r of t x of i plus x of t i plus y of t j so comparing i part and j part we get what about x and this is not actually uh, x of t instead of x of t we get a r of s or parameter s here we use s as the parameter so what is x of s so x of s is equal to x not plus s u1 because only changing variable is s that is called a parameter and uh, similarly the y of s we take simply as x or y so anyway x is equal to x not plus s u1 and y is equal to y not plus uh, s u2 where s is any real number now what happened now on the straight line x and y everything in terms of single variable s because x not and y not u1 u2 everything is fixed they are a fixed values okay so now uh, we can describe this straight line using a single variable s using this relation okay so next we have to identify the value of the function on the straight line in this figure in this uh, graph uh, this blue curve is the equation of the fun the function value on the straight line that is very easy you simply uh, substitute x and y using this equation so equation of this blue curve is nothing it is f of what is our x value on the straight line that is x not plus su1 and the y value is y not plus su2 this is the value of the function on the straight line and this is s is s can take any real value okay so this is the value of the function on this uh, straight line now what happened now we have a function like y is equal to f of x now we have a function y is equal to f of x is it is equal to in terms of single variable s you can easily differentiate so our aim is to differentiate uh, we have to find the rate of change of this function along this direction so you simply differentiate this function so what is our directional derivative so the notation of the notation of directional derivative is like this du d stands for derivative in the direction of u of f okay this read as directional derivative of f in the direction of u okay and which point x not y not okay this is the notation you got it so what is the definition what is the mathematical equivalent of this concept now we have a function on the straight line like single variable so you as a our partial derivative you can simply differentiate it so this is nothing it is d by ds of our function value our curve our curve is nothing x not plus su1 comma y not plus su2 okay and this is the derivative and again we have to find the derivative at this point so what is the value of s we know that when yes s equal to zero yes we know that when s equal to zero this gives the point x not y not so to find the derivative at this point first of all you differentiate this function with respect to s then you substitute s equal to zero so this gives the directional derivative or rate of change of the function in this direction at this point x not y okay this is the this is a very simple derivation it's a very simple concept in a, in a, like our uh, partial derivative okay next we formally define the partial derivative Yes, this is the definition okay if u is equal to u1 i plus u2 j is a unit vector uh, we will use this concept of unit vector in later okay that's why we take already unit vector because i uh, then the directional derivative of f of xy in the direction of u at x not y not is defined by like this du of f x not y not d by ds of this one okay geometrically this inside function geometrically this is nothing geometrically uh, this inside function is nothing it is the value of that surface value of the surface on that straight line that's all okay so now it is a single variable function so you can differentiate with respect to the parameter s then you simply substitute as equal to zero to, because we have to find the derivative at that point x not y not okay similarly we can extend this concept for three variable functions uh, this is the definition i think it is very clear we find the equation of the straight line on 3d straight line uh, then find the value of the function on that straight line then you differentiate with respect to s and substitute as equal to zero okay these are the uh, equations for evaluating directional derivative next we consider a simple problem 
if f x y equal to x y is a function, a two variable function, and u is also given, a vector is given, we have to find d u f one two. That means we have to find the directional derivative of this function in this direction at the point one two. You got it. All the vectors are starting from origin. Okay, you never. Uh, okay, you should understand that point. Okay, so you can directly use that formula for evaluating the uh, directional derivative. Okay, so very direct. It's a very direct problem. Everything is given. So we know the formula. It is d by d s of f of x naught plus u one s. Here x naught is one and uh, y naught is two and u one is root three by two and u two is one by two. Okay, as compared to the previous uh, definition. So this become x naught plus s times u one. This is y naught plus s times u two is one by two and we have to differentiate this one. Okay. So f is given. You simply plug in. This is our x value. This is our x value. This is y value. You simply plug in this x and y on this function. We get the function value uh, on the straight line in terms of s. Okay. So this become okay by substituting this x and y on this function value. We get this f of this value. That is value of the surface on the straight line is equal to the product of these terms x into y. And by simplifying this expression, we get like this. One by two plus root three times s plus two. Okay. So now the function value is ready. So next we have to differentiate this function with respect to s. So what happened? Okay, its derivative is equal to uh, one by two plus root three. Okay. So this is one by two plus root three. We have to find du of f one three, directional derivative of f. In the direction of u at one two, so we consider next du of f one two that is equal to you take the derivative and substitute as equal to zero. Actually, there is no parameter s equal to zero in this term. So whatever the value of s, the function value remains same. So the directional derivative is nothing. It is one by two plus root three. Okay. So this is the answer. Yes, one by two plus root three. Okay. Okay. Next we next we are going to think about the geometrical interpretation of this uh, directional derivative as similar to our normal derivative and partial derivative. Okay. And what about this point? This point is nothing. Actually, it's a three D point. So x naught, y naught. The third coordinate is nothing. It is f of x naught y naught, isn't it? So how to geometrically interpret this directional derivative? What's your opinion? Yes, we know that now geometrically what is derivative? First of all, we consider a straight line. Next, we consider a curve on the straight line. Then you differentiate. So, as similar to our normal derivative, this gives again the slope of the tangent at this point. Okay, so this directional derivative gives, or geometrically, we can interpret this as slope of the surface is it is equal to f x y in the direction of u. In the direction, actually, u is here. Vector u is here. Okay. In the direction of u, at the point x naught y naught f of x naught y naught. Okay. So this is the geometrical interpretation of directional derivative, slope of this tangent. Okay. As similar to the partial derivative, uh, we know that the derivative with respect to y is the slope of the in geometrically the slope of the tangent of this curve, isn't it? Passing through this point. Okay. And uh, partial derivative with respect to y, uh, sorry, partial derivative with respect to x at this point gives the slope of the tangent of this curve. Okay, we have two tangents. Okay, that uh, the value of this slope may be different depending on the uh, shape of the curve. Okay, so in general, slope of the surface may vary with the direction. Okay, so direction derivative at the point may be different with respect to the direction. Okay. Next, we are going to find another method for directional derivative, which is more easy because that uh, formula contains only the partial derivatives of the function. Okay, so that is very easy because we know what is chain rule. Actually, here our function f f depends to quantities x and y. Okay, actually our function is a function of x y, so f depends to quantities x and y, and we know what is our uh, x value. What is our x value? 
x value is nothing it is x naught plus s u1 and similarly our y is y naught plus s u2 okay that means x depends only s y also depends s because x naught and every other quantities are constants so you can write again you can extend this chain like this x depends okay x depends s and y also depends s so we have to find the derivative of this function f with respect to s and what is our chain rule yes a chain rule is nothing df by ds that is equal to first we have to differentiate with respect to x so here f depends two quantities x and y so we can take the partial derivative so it is dou f by dou x into derivative of x with respect to s x depends only one variable x s so you can take the ordinary derivative you can write the ordinary derivative dx by ds plus for completing the chain rule next we consider the next chain that is dou f by uh, dou y into the derivative of y is dy by ds okay so actually we have to find the derivative for for finding du actually we have to find the partial der uh, directional derivative so du of f at a particular point x naught y naught that is equal to derivative at s naught okay so at s naught what about dou f by dou, dou f by dou x it is nothing it is the simple notation is fx fx stands for the partial derivative it is nothing it is dou f by dou x at which point x naught y naught when s equal to zero the point become x naught y naught okay into what about dx by ds x is equal to x naught plus s u1 so what is the what is the derivative of dx uh, what is the derivative of x with respect to s yes it is u1 okay similarly what is the derivative of y with respect to s that is u2 so here this become u1 so fx x naught y naught u1 plus dou f by dou y at s naught that is nothing our partial derivative that is fy at x naught is a very more compact notation into uh, dy by ds derivative of y with respect to s that is u2 because u2 x y not everything constants they are numbers so this is u2 so this is another uh, equivalent representation of partial derivative for evaluating uh, for evaluating the partial derivative uh, this is comparatively easy because you simply take the partial derivative and plug in all these values here okay so this is the formal definition if fxy is differentiable at a point and uh, this is a unit vector that gives a direction then the a partial derivative then the directional derivative at this point is given by this formula fx x naught y naught into u1 plus fy x naught y naught into u2 okay similarly in the case of three variable we can uh, similarly we can uh, find the partial derivative using this formula okay they are similar formula Good. Uh, to find another representation uh, is a very simple uh, fact every unit vector that is u1i plus u2j can be written as like this cos theta i plus sin theta j for the what is theta theta is the angle from positive x axis to u it is very simple suppose you consider a vector u suppose this is unit and u is equal to u1i plus u2j a unit means its modulus value equal to 1 what is modulus value it is square root of u1 square plus u2 square equal to 1 you simply square on both sides we get u1 square plus u2 square equal to 1 so what is the meaning if u is a unit vector and if u is equal to u1i plus u2j is a unit vector then that coordinates u and u2 satisfies this equation and we know that this is the equation of the unit circle with radius 1 center origin okay then what is the polar representation of a circle that is x equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta okay in the case of unit circle this r is 1 you got it so what about x value so in this case instead of x it is u1 so what is u1 so u1 is r cos theta but r is 1 so u1 is cos theta and similarly u2 u2 is equal to r sin theta but here r is 1 so u2 equal to sin theta so every unit vector u1 i plus u2 j can be represented in terms of cosine sine and what is theta theta is this angle theta between positive x-axis and u okay so using this notation we can rewrite this equation 
this first equation has like this du of f of x naught y naught is equal to fx of x naught y naught and we are replacing this u1 by corresponding cos theta okay, corresponding to that vector u we can find a angle theta okay then you simply substitute cos theta instead of u1 similarly instead of u2 we can substitute sin theta okay this is another compact representation of uh, directional derivative Okay, next problem, find the directional derivative of fxy is equal to raised to xy at minus 2, 0 in the direction of the unit vector that makes the angle pi by 3 with the positive x-axis. Okay, so they give the direction, the direction is this angle is pi by 3, it means theta is given. Okay, vector is not given but the angle is given. So we know how to find this vector u, that is cos theta i plus sin theta j. Okay, so u1 is cos theta and uh, u2 is sin theta okay, in this case uh, theta is pi by 3 so u is nothing cos pi by 3 plus cos pi by 3 i plus sin pi by 3 j okay so our u is what is cos pi by 3 cos pi by 3 is 1 by 2 so this is 1 by 2 i plus and sin pi by 3 is root 3 by 2 root 3 by 2 j. so this is our unit vector u now vector is known point is known function is known we can use our partial derivative formula whatever we, you can use any formula but i think partial derivative formula is more easy for this function at least it is differentiable so what is fx what is the derivative of this function with respect to x fx is nothing it is y e raised to xy and similarly you can find fy what is fy the derivative of function with respect to y that is x uh, e raised to xy and to find the uh, directional derivative at this point we have to compute fx at this point minus 2 0 similarly we have to compute fy minus 2 0 and what is fx uh, at a minus 2 0 if you substitute this minus 2 and 0 we get this value becomes 0 and what about the second value this is minus 2 you simply plug in these values on this given function oh sorry not this function you plug in these values on this uh, fx and fy Okay, so 0 and minus 2. Now everything is there fx, fy, and u1 and u2, everything is known. So you can directly write the partial derivative formula du of f minus 2, 0. That is nothing fx minus 2, 0 into actually this is cos pi by 3 or u1, cos pi by 3 or u1, whatever be, and plus fy of minus 2, 0. And our u2 in this case u2 is nothing uh, sine pi by 3 everything is not after substituting all values this is 0 and what is cos pi by 3 is 1 by 2 uh, plus minus 2 this is minus 2 and sine pi by 3 is root 3 by 2 root 3 by 2 after simplification we get minus power root of 3 so this is the directional derivative of this function at this point okay i think it's a very direct problem the concepts are very important if you understand the concept you can easily solve this problem okay uh, consider another problem find the directional derivative of this function at the point 1 minus 2 0 in the direction of this vector okay it is clear that this vector is not unit okay so first of all we have to find the unit vector in this direction because what is the modulus of this vector this is square root of 2 square plus 1 square plus 2 square minus 2 square so anyway this is equal to 4 plus 4 uh, 8 plus 1 9 power root of 9 that's equal to 3 modulus value is always positive so we consider the positive square root so mod of mod of a is equal to 3 so this is not unit so how to find the so now we have a vector that is a its modulus value is 3 we have to find a unit vector in the same direction so that is very easy so what is a unit vector so unit vector in the direction of a by you take the formula uh, to find that unit vector we consider a by modulus of a okay then new vector become unit now u is unit but direction is same because we multiply a scalar with this a so what is u already a is there so you consider a by mod a where mod a is 3 so after some simplification we get 2 by 3 i plus 1 by 3 j minus 2 by 3 k so this is the unit vector in the same direction now everything is not okay now everything is 
in my our hand because unit vector is non, point is non, function is non. Then you can differentiate. So next you have to find fx, fy, and fz. At the point at, at this point, then you can use that uh, partial derivative formula. Okay. Anyway, after simplification, that is your uh, classwork. After substituting all these values, uh, that is uh, fx, fy, uh, fz. Next, we have to consider the fx at this point and fy at this point and fz at the point. Then you can use this formula du of f1 minus 2 0 as fx of 1 minus 2 0 times uh, this is our u1 part that is 2 by 3 plus fx of 1 minus 2 0 into what is u2 that is 1 by 3 and plus fz of 1 minus 2 0 into minus 2 okay upon simplification we get this and this value is actually uh, minus 4 and this value is actually 1 and this value is uh, again 1 so after simplification we get minus 3 so the directional derivative of this function is minus 3 the main point is if the vector is not unit then we have to convert that uh, we have to find the corresponding unit vector by dividing its modulus that's all okay so these are the concepts uh, uh, in this session once it is minus three okay these are the homework for today's session thank you